Wherever you are around the world today, it's great you can be here with us. Hello everybody, I pray that you are very well. Well, being a Christian and being an effective Christian is what we are called to. We're called to be a light on the hill. We're called to be those people that people look at and say, what are you on? What have you got? That's what a Christian is meant to be. They're meant to be that person who stands out by the quality of their life. Now, I don't know about you, but I look for formulas. I look for formulas that if you do certain things, you get certain results. Because there seems to be certain formulas or certain rules that seem to affect us greatly uh, in our life. For example, if I want to lose weight, one of the things that I've learned is I need to eat less and maybe exercise more. If I want to have a great relationship with Rosemary, well, one of the things that really helps that is if I don't have affairs with other women. That seems to make sense. If I want to get good results in exams and I'm studying, then it's important that I put in the hours to study. See, the effort that we put in certainly always dictates the result. And in many areas of our life, the reason we are reaping or sowing, reaping what we uh, have in our life is because we have sown in previous times certain ways of behaving. For many of us, our life is what it is today because of decisions that we made yesterday. Now, as a Christian, we are meant to be these light on the hill. We're meant to be these people who are in ever deepening relationship, growing in our relationship with God. And I want to look today at just a few things that Peter, St. Peter came along and he wrote uh, and he said, these are things that are important for you. And what I'm going to do is read the end of, the, end of a, a passage first and then I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I'm going to read from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, and it says this, For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, for if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, what he's saying, if these things are among you, if you're doing these things, you will be fruitful and you will be effective in your knowledge of God. Now, I was raised in the Catholic world and I've been very pleased to be uh, raised in the Catholic world and to be Catholic all my life. I know many Christian people from other Christian denominations who I can only describe as extraordinarily holy as well. And, 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 but what I, have, what I have learned is that in my world, it's so easy to just be a church attender, to just turn up all the time in church and... Uh, and, and for many years, it was to tick the box. It was to say your prayers, pay your club dues, so to speak. And that, that's what Christianity was all about. It was this ob set of obligations that you fulfilled. And then I got introduced to this whole idea of a relationship with God. And I got introduced even more than that was to the fact that this relationship with God was meant to be an ever deepening, getting richer relationship. I've recently just uh, celebrated my 40th wedding anniversary with Rosemary. And the young girl that I married all those years ago. And now, well, we both changed. But what I've learned is that our relationship today is far richer than it was back then, even though we were young and full of vitality and passions uh, for things uh, that maybe we don't have quite the same level of energy today. But our relationship is far richer today than it was back there. And if you said to me today, would you like to trade for what you had back then? For now, I, th I think I'd clearly say no way. No way do I want that relationship that I had for as exciting as it was for the relationship that Rosemary and I have today. And it's the same way uh, in our relationship with God that if there's certain things that we do, our relationship gets richer, it grows and grows. So let's go back to verse 3 and let's read from 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 starting in verse 3. And I'm going to go through this piece by piece 
and just explain it to it so to us so that you can go away and in your prayer and in your reflection and throughout this week you can stop and think through these things and say to yourself how am i growing in an ever deepening relationship with god in verse 3 it says this his divine power has given us everything needed for life and for godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness That's a verse packed with information. Thus he's given us through these things his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that it's in the world because of lust and may become participants of the divine nature. Another big verse. For this reason you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with endurance. And endurance with godliness. And godliness with mutual affection. And mutual affection with love. And then verse 8 says, For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is a a passage of Scripture that is packed with information that is for the everyday, ordinary Christian person. It's not just for the academics. It's not just for the holy people. This is for you and for me, people like me and you. This is for us. And, if we would, and, and so I'm just going to go a little slowly to read it so that you can, when you go to church in your daily prayer, grow in this ever-deepening knowledge of God. Have a look at verse 3 again. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness. Everything that you need to live your life with all of its challenges, with all of its problems, with all of its wonders and beauty, everything that you need for life, God's power has been given to you when you said, I believe. When you said, I believe, And I accept you in my life as my Lord, my Savior. I accept you as God. Everything that you need to live the life where you are with all of the challenges and all of the joys, you have. You have. And not only that, not only that, is uh, is you, you have everything you need to live a life of godliness. In other words, to live how God intended you to live. Right, to live how God. So you have everything you need for life where you are and to live it in a godly manner. Now, that's going to be different at different times in different seasons of our life. I just talked about when Rosemary and I in our early 20s got married. Well, there was a there was a level of what we needed for life and for godliness that was there now. But I I meet people who are retired, some living in retirement homes. Living, living quietly, no longer working. God has at, you, at that stage of life, everything that you need to live for life right then and there. And also to be able to live that life in a godly manner. So again, let's look at it again. It says his divine power has given us everything needed for life and, good, and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So where does that, where does everything we need for life and the godliness come? It comes through the knowledge of what God has done and who God is. So we look back to God, we look back to God and God, and by looking at God, we see within God everything we need for life and for goodness. So through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So, it is, so when we look at God, we say, God, I know that everything I need for my life right now today, I have. Everything I need for life, I have right now. In verse 4, it goes on, it says, Thus he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises. What are the great promises of God? That if you give your life to me, I will be with you. If you give your life to me, I will care for you. If you give your life to me, no matter what you go through in life, I'm right there with you. What are the great promises? That eternity awaits for all of us. 
What are the great promises? Is that you will know me now, not just in eternity, not just in the next life, but now. And that I will be with you right now, exactly in the place. Uh, Thus he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and may become participants in the divine nature. So everything you need for life, for godliness, comes because you know uh, who God is, and everything you need to be able to, uh, to do this is because God's promises is, I'm with you. And I'm calling you to me. In verse, in verse 6, it goes on and it says, um, uh, For this very reason, sorry, okay, if these things are to be true, this is the formula for what you must do. For this may, very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith, your faith, that which you believe, that which, that which, you, that's which you declare, that God is with me, that God loves me, that God has called me into a relationship with him, that I am free from sin, that I have access to God. Uh, from the effects of sin, I have access to God. And so it, to support that faith, that belief, what must we do? You must support that faith with goodness. That within you, there, there is that quality within you that seeks good. That seeks good. And and it is a and it is a condition of the heart to be a person of goodness. We have a man here in our in our ministry, and uh, uh, he, he uh, named Scott. And uh, if you know Scott, there is a goodness in Scott that you see in him. You see a goodness in the man. And he's a quiet man. He's a strong man. He's a man of character and he's a man of integrity. And there's a goodness within him, right? And, and, and so goodness is this quality that I am trying to be good in the place where I am. And it, it, it's a question of the heart. It's a question of us being transformed with, within. It is a surrendering of ourself to God, um, and it says, and make every effort to support your faith, that which you believe, with goodness. I'm going to be good. And I'm not just going to be a good boy in that sense of the simplistic understanding of that, but that there's a goodness in terms of the surrender of my heart. Um, uh, make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge. Now, the knowledge that it's talking about here, if you go and study what it's talking about, is not just information. But it's talking about the knowledge of coming to know who God is, to know God's character, to know God's ways, to know how God is in your life. And so, and so we support our faith with godliness. We support that godliness by getting to know the very character and nature of God. Um, and, then, and, and then it goes on and says, and knowledge with self-control. Now, why self-control? All of us need to discipline this body of flesh with all of its desires. I don't know about you, but I want to tend to go to the easiest things at times. I want the lust of my eyes, the lust of sometimes my, the inner part of me to do whatever I want to do to look after me. I want pleasure and pleasure even at the expense of others at times. We're all like that, aren't we? And so self-control is the ability to stay disciplined of, I'm going to be good. I'm going to live a life of godliness, living as God called me to. See, the difference between good and godliness is I'm living according to what God wants, not just I'm trying to be good by keeping rules. When I was young, I was told I was a good boy because I kept the rules. Godliness is the seeking to be like God. And so, and so we, we support that godliness with knowledge and the knowledge and knowledge is the knowledge of who God is and what he is like and knowledge with self-control. I'm going to live according to that knowledge, which I have uh, and self-control with endurance. The reality is, is that life is full of problems at times. 
struggles at times. Life is a journey. Well, the, the, the person I am today and the person I was 40 years ago when I got married is very different in many, many ways and yet in many ways is just the same. The same person is within me. But I have learnt so much and I've learnt the discipline of going in particular directions all of, all of the time. And so endurance, perseverance is the doing what is right over and over and over again. Doing what needs to be done, keeping to the formula over and over. Um, and endurance with godliness. What's godliness? Godliness is being like God acting in the way that a Christian person is called to live as they seek to be like God. Our whole life is to conform ourselves into the image of God, to be like God. And then it goes on and it says, and godliness with mutual affection. And godliness with mutual affection. Mutual affection means the things that we do to care for one another in a practical way. And so we see the needs of others and we uh, reach out to them in practical ways and mutual affection with love and what is love love is an attitude of heart and then it goes on and in verse 8 it says for if these things occur uh, these things are yours and are increasing among you they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ so if these seven things are in our life if these seven things are in our life they help us to be, in, to be effective in our growth and in our relationship with God. And what are these seven things? Faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, and endurance, uh, uh, and godliness. Now, those five things are internal. And then there are two that are external. Mutual affection and, with, and love, which are those that we turn toward others. And it comes all back to when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment of all? It's to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to grow in your relationship with Jesus, then seeking after these seven things, disciplining yourself in these seven things is the formula to growing in your relationship with God. And then when you go to church on Sundays, then when you sit down to have your personal prayer, you'll find that it will be like you're growing deeper and deeper and deeper into your relationship with God. Uh, this is a formula for how we're called to live as Christian people so that we would not be ineffective in knowing who Jesus is and living with Jesus in our life every day. I would encourage you to, pass, to study this passage of Scripture. It's a very powerful passage of Scripture. Loving Father, we thank you today that you're with us. Allow us to encounter you more and more and more in our life and to grow more deeply with you. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Every day of the year, bar none, we receive from people messages, uh, things that people write to us to say to us how much the message of the gospel has touched their life and blessed them. How listening to a daily devotional or the weekly messages that go out have touched their lives. There wouldn't be a day of the year. The last few Christmases, even on Christmas Day, people have written the very same things to us. And it has been extraordinary. There are so many people whose marriages have been brought back together. There are so many people who have been able to go on from uh, relationships that have ended. There are many people who've become better parents. People, all these things have happened because they've discovered a deeper relationship with Jesus. And it's affecting them, and it's affecting them change the world. Our world is desperate for Christ. It's desperate for God. And that's what we are trying to do here, to share the gospel in a way that penetrates beyond the boundaries of our church buildings into people's homes, onto their phones and into their computers and into their hearts ultimately. The gospel works when people are open and people hear it. And it's amazing how many people who don't go to church hear the message of the gospel and they quietly listen to it and it transforms their life. And I want to thank all of our financial supporters, everyone who has made that possible to help keep families together, to help people go in the direction in their careers that they're meant to go. 
all because they've heard the message of Christ through this ministry. And I'm just so abundantly grateful. And I want to ask you today, would you help me? Would you help me proclaim Christ all over the world? All over the world. And together, let's do it. Let's share Christ with people in countries far and close. Our neighbours, people all over the world, so that they would know Christ more deeply. Uh, now, I can't do it without you. I've said that on numerous occasions. I in particular want to thank our Faith Builder partners, the people who've gone into our website and have set up a way that every, every month they contribute, every week some, in some cases, people contribute to the ministry to make this possible. Now, as a sign of my a gift to you, to thank you for being with me and supporting me, I want to send you a recent ebook that I have released called Seven Life-Changing Habits We Can Learn from the Life of Mary. Mary surrendered her life so incredibly to God that she becomes a model for us like so many other models, but in a special way, she becomes a model where her, where her life and the way she lived her life is something that we practically can do. And I wrote this book in order to be able to help people uh, in, their, in their life and walk more deeply with God. And I would love for you to be able to receive it. You can, for a gift above the amount of the cost of getting it to you and developing it, uh, you can give whatever you would like in order to help us do it. Now, what we know is that, is that uh, there are some people who can't afford it. And so I want to make it as price effective as we can so as many people can get it. But I also know that there are many, many people who give far more in order that many more can receive it. We've had some people give $1,000. We've had some people give $10. You determine what you should give in order that the gospel could be proclaimed all over the world. And, and I just want to give this book, Seven Life-Changing Habits uh, that we can learn from the life of Mary to you as a way of just saying thank you to you for standing with me and for us together we can proclaim in the gospel. You can go into the Give tab or you can go to this address on the screen. And uh, I want to just thank you so much uh, for standing with me and helping me proclaim Christ. Loving Father, I thank you today that you're with us. I pray, Lord God, that you would be with us in all the things we do. And Lord, today I want to pray a prayer from the Holy Spirit book as we conclude today and we go into our, into our, into our week. And this prayer says this, Almighty God, allow me to see and experience your love because love is your identity. As I conform my image and character to your character, allow your love to reside more within me. May your love transform the very substance of who I am. Through the actions of the Holy Spirit, allow me to encounter your presence today in my life. Wherever I am today in life, please bless me. And Father, I make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. Thank you for being with us. I pray that you know that God is with you wherever you are. God bless you. And don't forget, as I always say, that God is with you wherever you are.